the stupid team. Stupid coaches. They're stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. I can't stand this coaching staff. I want him fired. Uh oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <laughs> oh wow! It's just ridiculous. Oh wow! Philly five hundred melting down. So stupid. Every week, stupidity. <laughs> I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out? And then you run two plays like that. Oh. I mean, get down. You can't afford to kick field goals. You can't stop them on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh, wow. Philly. It, it can suck my left ass ball. <laughs> Oh my God! What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, as always. I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I hope you all are having a great New Year's. I hope your 2024. Got to get used to doing that. You know, it's kind of you guys don't realize the struggle because see, it used to be you used to have to write a check for everything. Got to pay your electric bill. You wrote a check. You went to the grocery store. You wrote a check. And I would always be back in last year. You'd always forget to write 2024 for the first couple of months or so. So y'all don't understand the struggle, but happy new years, everybody. Um, I'm here at the red brick house. I'll be doing my live stream nine o'clock Eastern. I hope you all join. We have one more regular season game, and then we're talking about playoffs. And I, I was looking at some numbers today, and it is literally mind-blowing. What if I said you could have Tariq Hill on the Cowboys? What would you say to that? Would you say, oh, yeah, hell yeah. We'd, shoot, bro, I'd love to have me some Tariq Hill. Well, what if I said we have a Tariq Hill and CeeDee Lamb. Here is what is amazing to me. I, I, I almost can't believe this myself. This is literally mind-blowing. Because right now, I don't know if you guys realize this, but check this out. CeeDee Lamb leads the NFL in receptions. 122. He's got 10 more receptions than Tariq Hill. Whoa, dude. Um, Yardage-wise, you know, Tariq Hill's got more yards per average, of course, than CD. But we're only talking about 69 yards difference between Tariq Hill and CD Lamb. Some people are talking about Tariq Hill being MVP. He's got 12 TDs. CD? He's got 10. He's in the ballpark. It is those two guys. And what, what makes this amazing is that this is where it literally blows your mind. Because you remember when A.J. Brown, and, and this is where I know everybody's going to just say, well, Dak Prescott's only successful because he's got C.D. Lamb. But as Roger Staubach taught me, it doesn't matter what pass you throw if the other guy doesn't catch it. And he's a Hall of Famer. It means that both of you have to be there. CeeDee Lamb having, you know, somebody else throw to him is not necessarily going to have those yards. Just not. So you have to give some of that credit to the quarterback and the play calling. Because A.J. Brown, if you'll remember, was on a tear earlier part of the season. 125-yard-plus games. But this is where it literally is mind-blowing that he's only 69 yards behind Tariq Hill. You'll remember the first couple of games of the season was all defense. We played the Giants. The offense didn't do much of anything. The, the, you know, special teams and defense was scoring left to right. Same thing with the Jets. And once we got past those games, I want you to understand that remember when C.D. Lamb was kind of like pouting on the sidelines because he was under 53 yards a game. Against the Cardinals, four catches, 53 yards. Against New England, four catches, 36 yards. 
against the 49ers, four catches, 49 yards. So you can take, he had 77 the first game, 143 against the Jets, uh, 53, 36, 49, hike. So wait a minute, actually, let, let me do this while we're here because, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm always multitasking, okay? But if we take CDs, let's see, 49 yards, plus 36, plus 53, plus 143, plus 77. So that's 358 yards for the first five games, right? So that's 71 yards a game. Okay, that's respectable. So if we take now the total yards, 1,651 Dallas Cowboy team record. Minus 358. Means he's got 1,298 yards left over. And the Cowboys have played 16 games. So that's 11 games. Divided by 11. Since the 49er game, he has averaged 117 yards a game. If... Let's say you ended up doing that all 17 games. He'd be at 1,998 yards on the season. Two yards from 2,000. It's unbelievable that he's got 1,651 yards when the first five games he only broke 100 once. The offense was ass, ass. We got beat down by... The 49ers, it was gimme games with the Giants and the Jets. The Cardinals, nobody showed up. And the Patriots, eh, well, it was kind of like by committee. So when we start looking at this team, we have players that constantly get overlooked. CeeDee Lamb, it was almost comical to me because when I was watching the Lions game, one of the comments I kept getting from one of the fans was, you know, we need to go away from C.D. Lamb. We're using C.D. Lamb too much. Well, if it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because when he has one-on-one -on -one coverage, anytime, you're going to C.D. Lamb. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are going to C.D. Lamb. So, there you have it. Later, we'll be dealing with Dak Prescott and his numbers where he is in the top four in just about every positive quarterback category. Can we finally say that Dak Prescott is more than just a bus driver? That maybe he's elite? I know haters will say, oh, hell no. Get off the weed. But I'm being serious here. It's time to start giving that man some credit. All right, good people. See you guys in an hour. Peace.